Lois Griffin has earned her place as one of the most well-known mothers in animation. She's gone through a lot of changes, and we've been able to see the best and worst sides of her. Lois once killed a woman. But out of all the things Lois has done, which has been the best and which was the worst? Hey guys, I'm Brad with Wicked Binge, and these are Lois Griffin Deeds, Good to Evil. Let's start with Lois's good deeds, kind and even heroic acts that Lois is responsible for, starting with some good and working our way towards the most noble. Our first spot on this list goes to helping Brian. Of all the members of the Griffin family, Brian was always someone Lois would go to for advice. In the first few seasons, they had a really close friendship. Despite Brian claiming his best friend is Peter, it's easy to say that Lois could take that title. Lois and Brian could have conflicting views, but she called him on his bad behavior. When she felt that Brian was being brainwashed by Rush Limbaugh, Lois showed how determined Brian was to always be on the losing end of things, calling him a contrarian. I think you just gotta be in the out group. And regardless of your political beliefs, Lois had a point. When Brian was upset with Peter for giving Jillian the idea to move in together, Lois defended it. She said that if Brian didn't want the same things Jillian did, then he should end the relationship. When Brian won a trip to Martha's Vineyard to present his speech, Lois had been the only one to show up and show him support. When he had an accident in the middle of the grocery store, Lois tied her sweater around him and led Brian out to the car. She may not have stayed the nurturing and patient friend that she had been in early episodes, but we still have to give credit to Lois for calling out Brian when he was being ridiculous and hearing him out when he needed to vent. Next is supporting her brother and sister. When Lois came across a family photo that had Patrick in it, she tried to do the right thing by freeing him from the Brookfield Insane Asylum. This would not be a good idea, but we can see why Lois assumed that her parents just sent Patrick away, due to him just being an inconvenience. When she found out that Patrick was killing people, Lois didn't call the police like she should have, but she did at least try to stop Patrick by reaching out to him. And though she had to have him recommitted, she showed a lot of regret. Patrick, you're my brother and I love you. She and Patrick didn't know each other long, but she wanted to be there for him. As for Lois's sister Carol, she needed help in a different way. Carol suffered from low self-esteem, which led her to rushing into relationships and getting a broken heart when those marriages didn't work. Having all of Carol's exes show up to Adam West's home to remind Carol of her mistakes was overkill, but we understand that it came from a well-meaning place. Lois didn't believe that Carol would be able to handle the trauma of another failed relationship, and so did what she could to help. Luckily, Lois was able to amend her mistake and be more supportive. Taking the bronze medal of her most heroic deed is stopping Bonnie. While Lois is guilty of being unfaithful to Peter, we still have to commend how far she went to stop Bonnie from leaving Joe. Lois had been unhappy to hear that Bonnie was only traveling for the sake of having an affair far from home, where she wouldn't be caught. But upon hearing that Bonnie was seriously considering leaving her husband and daughter behind, Lois made the choice to call Joe. Throughout the episode, Lois was trying to convince Bonnie to not go through with it. It wasn't until Bonnie claimed she didn't have much reason to go back home that Lois called Joe to convince Bonnie to return to Quahog. Lois got involved again when Bonnie and Joe almost split after Joe's affair, which led Bonnie to the strip club where she and Joe could meet again. Lois is not the most faithful wife, so she had no business asking Joe to go to France to confront his wife. But when you break down what Lois said to get through to Bonnie, it made sense as to why she thought Joe and Bonnie staying together was the best option. Every time Bonnie brought up having an affair or leaving her husband, Lois would mention their daughter, Susie. During a conversation in an earlier episode, when Peter and Lois' marriage was being revealed as highly dysfunctional, Lois made the comment that they needed to get Stewie to college and that was it. It is what it is. Let's just get Stewie to college and go from there. Lois has been taught that having two parents that detest each other was better than having parents that were split up. It's a warped view, and Lois did not have the qualifications to help anyone with their marriage, but this motivation and viewpoint explains why she felt the need to get involved. The silver medal goes to trying to help the city. After swimming in a contaminated lake, Lois confronted Mayor West. When she saw that he wasn't motivated to change where the oil companies spilled their waste, Lois runs for mayor to change things. Unfortunately, it didn't work out and she turned the position back over to Mayor West. You can have your job back. She stopped it when they tried to resume the dumping, but they just wanted someone in office that would play ball, which Mayor West said he would do. 
Lois didn't stop there, though, and would run for another office, a place on the school board. Initially, she had been facing off against another woman before running unopposed, but after seeing a teacher, Mr. Fargus, toss eggs of an endangered species off of the roof of the school, Lois supported the choice to let Fargus go. Peter, who got Fargus off his medication, demanded Lois rehire the old teacher. This was another race that Lois didn't win, but it was a good attempt before Peter sabotaged her. In a recent episode, Lois disagreed with the choice to elect Wild West as mayor, just because he was related to Adam. She showed her support towards the local librarian running for office, driving home the point to the community that they should vote for someone with a good platform rather than someone with a familiar family name. Again, she was unsuccessful, but we appreciate the effort. The gold medal goes to calling out Peter. Lois is far from a model citizen or mother of the year, but her husband Peter is on another level of neglect. Some of the best and most memorable moments involving Lois are times when she presses Peter to be a better husband and father. When Peter got liposuction and hurt Chris's self-esteem, Don't look at me! I'm hideous! Made a bar in the basement to avoid the family, knocked out the television but let Meg take the fall, Lois pointed out when Peter messed up. She always got on his case for not being a good role model and not trying to get to know his children. After Peter beat up a neighbor's child that had been bullying Chris, Lois demanded he go and apologize. When Peter decided he liked being a bully and in control of his friends and neighbors, Lois made Peter realize he was being the same terror that made his own childhood so awful. When everyone was tricked by the news station's April Fool's prank, Peter revealed that he hated being around his children. I just hate being around the kids. Afterwards, Meg, Chris, and Stewie avoided him because they were upset. Lois supported them expressing their anger, telling Peter that if he couldn't connect with them, then that was his issue, not theirs. After Peter and Meg came back from a trip, Lois tried to get Meg to think about her future rather than focusing on a good relationship with Peter. She knew that going to Peter to get him to stop was useless, and so had to confront Meg directly. It was a shame that Lois knew Peter would be more concerned with being Meg's friend than thinking about her future, but at least Lois knew how to approach the issue. We've already established that Lois is not the best mother or wife. The more the show goes on, the more evident this becomes. But in the initial episodes, Lois used her anger and her manipulation tactics to protect her children and support her family, rather than tear them down. Now let's flip to the other end of the spectrum and look at Lois's evil deeds, starting with the least offensive and working our way towards the most disgraceful. The least evil deed is going on the run. Lois becomes a kleptomaniac. She started small, stealing shirts and jewelry before moving on to valuable paintings. Her need to push the limits of what she can get away with eventually led to her getting arrested. But the mess that happened after is what earned this as one of her worst actions. After the family visited her in jail, Lois went along with a poorly put together plan to break her out. The Griffins were forced to leave everything behind and start over in Chinatown, making new lives while hiding from police. Though Lois had made a horrified comment at their predicament as they were fleeing from the prison, she adapted and accepted that her family was going to be in hiding with her, all because she couldn't control her impulses. Standing at the window to watch for police in shifts, being forced in a small apartment, and getting by with the bare minimum, Chris, I'm hungry. It's your turn to keep watch for the cops. Lois was fine putting her family through it if it meant she could be with them and out of jail. It wasn't until they were running through the sewers to get away from Joe and the rest of the police that Lois finally had her revelation that none of this was okay. And if you think we're being too harsh about ranking this as one of the worst deeds, we would like to point out that Lois nearly got a lenient sentence until she tried stealing the judge's gavel, proving she had little to no control over herself. Next is Lois's mini violent outburst. When Lois punches somebody out for attacking her husband, she's initially horrified and wants nothing to do with it. Lois has said she didn't support any kind of violence. Oh no, I do not condone violence. But anytime she was given a chance to take up an aggressive sport or hobby, Lois was always the one to take things too far. She used her karate to brawl with tourists, she lashed out at Peter, and encouraged the family to let out their pent-up anger by nearly killing each other. She excelled at boxing, just because she focused all the anger she had towards Peter on her opponents. The ongoing trend with such episodes is always Lois's hatred of Peter and the things he does. Rather than deal with these issues in a healthy way like counseling or getting a divorce, Lois instead channeled her aggression into fighting. The bronze medal goes to the abuse of her children. In the first few seasons, Lois wasn't the best mom. I'm not the perfect mother. Who 
is. But she was at least trying to help her children. She tried to get Meg out of her shell, she supported Chris, and she tackled a dog to save Stewie's favorite bear. But the more the show progressed, the more Lois's mothering changed for the worse. She started insulting her kids, giving them nicknames like Dum Dum or Big Head. She attempted to steal Meg's boyfriend because Peter was making her insecure. She manipulated Meg to do things she didn't want to do, like taking care of Joe while Bonnie was out of town. When she took Meg to spring break, Lois not only spent the time neglecting her daughter, but she slips how Meg became an accident. When Chris was upset, Lois asked him if he planned to kill himself, saying that it would make her look like a bad mother if he did, only for her to quickly come up with a plan of how to redeem her image, saying that she would spin it to seem it was a miracle he lasted as long as he did. When Dr. Hartman estimated that Stewie would be shorter than expected, Lois then asked if Stewie would also die at a young age, looking optimistic. I mean, I suppose it's fine if he's gonna die at 14. When Carter was temporarily blind and asked Lois to look after him, Lois insisted that Stewie needed her, hitting him to make him cry. Stewie says she does this a lot. Lois was also proven that she could be just as neglectful as Peter after he tried pinning Stewie's injuries on her. When Lois found Stewie under the car, she became frantic. Instead of insisting to rush Stewie to the hospital, she pleaded with Peter to help her hide the crime until they could pin it on someone else. This was the same thing the rest of the family had done for the majority of the episode, but there was something especially unsettling with how quickly Lois came up with that plan. The silver medal goes to throwing out her whole family. After making the entire family go on a cleaning spree, Lois is happy for a little while. Soon, she goes further and further with throwing everything away and minimizing everything in her life. When Peter began acting like a nuisance, tracking sand and crabs in the bed, Lois kicks him out of the house as he wasn't bringing her joy. The first part is an overreaction, with Lois stating that it was what the book said she should do. Considering Peter and Lois' relationship in later episodes, it would make sense that Lois would come to the conclusion that Peter no longer makes her happy. We're not exactly the model of a healthy marriage. In fact, they nearly go their separate ways in several episodes, only to make up in the last five minutes. However, the reason we're placing this as one of Lois' most evil actions is because she doesn't stop at Peter. Soon, everything bothers her. She took away Meg's glasses because they were cluttering up her face. She drags Stewie's time machine down the stairs and lays into her kids, thinking that they were hiding signs for her projects in Stewie's bedroom. Lois was so focused being on the warpath, she didn't even notice the jumps through time caused by her handling a piece of technology she was not qualified to deal with. What followed was Lois throwing everyone else out of the house one by one, even Stewie, who claimed he was only kicked out for using his diaper. After Lois was finally alone in an empty house, she spiraled further. She didn't understand why she wasn't happy after getting rid of everything and only snapped out of her obsessive state when she was saved by a bunch of garbage. The episode showed how close Lois was to the edge and how she took the smallest things and turned them into a mess that nearly destroyed her family. It's what viewers would expect from Peter, but with Lois, it was more unsettling. Peter would get wrapped up in something and not even realize how his family was affected by his actions, but Lois knew what she was doing. When everyone voiced their concerns, Lois responded by saying it wasn't bringing her joy and therefore not important. Finally, the gold medal of most evil goes to committing murder. That's right, Lois has indeed been confirmed to have committed a couple of murders throughout the show. Chris had pointed out that Lois ran over a pedestrian, to which no one really responded. When Chris was in a daze after being traumatized by the death of Arthur Valentine, Lois confessed to killing someone. I killed a jaywalker in 2002. When Peter had a harmonica stuck in him, Lois had come home and confessed to finding a child under her car, which led to her fleeing and riding a train far south until she felt it was safe to return home. In a more recent episode, Lois became obsessed with being dubbed the customer of the week at a local coffee shop. To get the title and her photo on the wall, she spends hundreds of dollars on a painting one of the employees did. After Chris suggested she save one of the employees' lives, Lois formulated a plan to target one of the baristas using a small packet of peanuts. Lois then waited for the young woman to have a reaction, not anticipating that she would be able to drive just far enough to get into a major wreck. In an effort to hide the now attempted murder, Lois then kidnapped another employee and held his roommates hostage before she was eventually caught, all while repeating that she was a kind and loving person who didn't do these sort of things. I'm a good person, Joe. All right, guys, that's it. Let us know in the comments section if you agree with our ranking and tell us what we should cover next. Remember to hit that notification bell and binge more of our videos, but most importantly, stay wicked.